It's time for Clubhouse Chatter. Here's Norm Ordez. Hey, that's right. Good morning. Hey, Brian, man, it's a beautiful morning out here. No it snow? It is, finally. I know we Good got stuff. some sun, and it's uh, fairly decent. I mean, about 50 degrees, so... So 50. our 50, I know, I know it's better than 32. <laughs> oh yeah. So our guest this morning is one of our favorites. He, um, I had him on, I interviewed him backstage at the Hawthorne theater in Portland a couple of summers ago when the, yeah. when he rolled through with his, uh, solo show and yeah. you are, you have been one of our most popular shows. Really? Absolutely. People love King Buzzo. I wonder what happened. <laughs> <laughs> they love you, Buzz. What did I do? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. so so it's been a while. So how you been? I'm oh, good. You're busy, as usual. I don't take too much time off. I, you're yeah. one of the hardest working guys in, in the biz, man. Well, you know, when rock and roll, the bar's set pretty high. So. It, it is. <laughs> so you uh, you were in a golf tournament last weekend. I was. And how, how'd that go? Well, halfway through, it started pouring rain. Okay. And so uh, I didn't do that good, but I, I did okay, you know? I, I, I hear you're a pretty decent golfer. Decent. Yeah, I hear, you're, I hear you're a pretty decent golfer. Well, compared, compared to what? <laughs> well, that probably compared to me. I mean, I, I don't get out as much. Now, Brian, on the other hand, Brian gets out golfs quite a bit. He's a, he's a high school golf coach, so... Wow. Um, so yeah, so Brian Brian knows his golf a little better than I do. So oh, that's great. But see, down here you can golf fifty two weeks a year. You know. Yes, yes, and down there is in the L A area, correct? Yes, I live in Los, in, in Los Angeles, actually in Hollywood. So. so now, do you do you consider I've been for about eight years? Okay. Do you consider yourself an L A guy, even though you're from Washington? I've been in California for thirty years. So absolutely. Years. And uh, I've lived in L.A. for 24, almost 24 years. So I've been in L.A., you know, half my life. Right. <laughs> Pretty much. It's a lot. It's, it's a, lot. A, little more, a little less than half my life. I'm 52. So. A lot different than uh, Washington, I'll tell you. It is, but, you know, I mean, uh, uh, I prefer it here. And uh, my wife lives here, so that kind of sealed the deal. Right, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> So Buzz, I be with her. I, she's from here, you know, originally. So right. uh, I would have a hard time shoehorning her out of California. You know? Have you been Have you been following the World Baseball Classic at all? No, no. I went to the very first year they had it down holy, in San Diego. Holy and cow! I went to a bunch of those games, but uh, uh, after that, uh, um, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't pay any attention to it again. You know, I uh, the worst part of that day. Was sitting through nine hundred national anthems. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. I was like, oh my god! And one thing I couldn't believe is that the Cuban team all didn't defect. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to. <laughs> they haven't defected yet either. And so, speaking of Cuba, so this year's tournament has been just unreal. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. So you've got Israel. Team Israel is four and zero. That's amazing. Nobody had to explain the rules to him. You know, I and Brian asked me this morning. You know, are they where you thought they would be? And I'm like, I honestly thought they would go one and two, and not even make it out of the first round. But yeah, man, they've caught fire. Well, baseball's a weird sport. You know, I mean, uh, the best team can lose. What do they lose? Sixty games a year. Yep. You know, so it's odd. The worst team will win sixty games a year. So there's really no other sport like it that I know of. I mean, I'm not really that familiar with every single sport in the world. Maybe it's like cricket, but which I imagine baseball came out of. But I don't know that much about cricket. But to me, it's the oddest, weirdest game. And for that very reason, you know, you're, you're a goat one day and a hero the next. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the That's only... What I love about it. I love the, all of that stuff. What was it? It's, it's the only sport simple. where the offense doesn't... Uh, what is it, Brian? For only sport that offense doesn't touch the ball or yeah. something like that. Yeah, the defense has the ball. Defense has the ball, correct? Yeah. And so, and, uh, you know, if your team doesn't have good pitching, you're screwed. Pretty much. You are screwed. Pretty you know? much. And if you if you can hit the ball three times out of ten, you're a multimillionaire. You're a hall of famer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Figure that out. You know. Although they haven't uh, they haven't put Donnie baseball in there yet. You know? No, not yet. He's a 300 career hitter. Not yet. He should be in there. 
he played on the worst Do- uh, Yankees era, I think. Oh, one of them. Yeah. One of them, yeah, absolutely. You and know? so he, um, he, he was like a you know diamond. Yes. Yeah, there's a so couple where, of guys. Why isn't he in there? Come on, let's protest. You know, you know <laughs> I'm a big Dale Murphy guy, and uh, I, you know, I think Dale Murphy belongs as well. I, I, it's, it's hard for me to understand what their criteria is. You know, I, I don't really get it. But uh, 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 whatever. I mean, you see him honor guys that I couldn't agree more with. Like, you know, Greg Maddox and Glavin, all those guys. You know, and it's, it's it's like, yeah, I'm right on. I believe it, you know. Greg, they're right about they're mostly right, I think. You know, but I, right. I certainly don't know. I'm no expert on that. So, Greg Maddox is probably one of the foulest guys you'll ever come across. One of the what? Foulest. I mean, Foul? dirty. Yes. So you this, mean he's mean or he's oh, foul he's just dirty. So some oh, of the pranks, like, some of the pranks he has pulled are just oh, flat oh, out okay. just so like. If you're ever if you're ever in like the Atlanta Braves clubhouse and they have clubhouse chili and Greg Maddox is around, skip the chili. Don't go for the chili. Oh, uh, got it, got it, got it. And so, I mean, he's been known to do some things to the chili in the clubhouse. So, I guess he has it right. <laughs> yes, yeah. So the, the, for those guys, they better eat before they go to the game. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're a Dodger fan. I'm a baseball fan in general, but I like the Dodgers a whole lot. And so, I'm National League baseball. That's what I like. Right. How many games do you usually make a make to a year in a year? It depends on how busy we are. You know, I'm not in a position. I'm you know maybe someday when I'm not t- traveling as much, uh, I might be able to get season tickets or something like that. But uh, it's not really worth it for me at the moment because uh, I'm gone most of the time. The season's going. You're so, always on the road. Well, we tour in, in the, um, good weather times. Of, of of North America, you know, or nor- the Northern Hemisphere. So that's usually during baseball. Right. But that's made it to where we've been able to go to a lot of games around the country. If we have a day off, sometimes it doesn't work out. Right. Um, we've seen quite a few parks, probably more than most people, but less than a lot of other people. But uh, um, which is always great. You know, I got to see some really cool parks, and I try to make a point if I can of going to all the parks in California mm-hmm. once a-, a year if I can do that. And uh, we've even done a thing here. It schedules line up. I've done this more than once. Where and this me and this buddy of mine, actually this guy from Washington that I, grew, that I went to high school with, he's a school teacher and he'll fly down on his vacations because um, he's got the summers off. Mm-hmm. So if I'm having to be home and the schedules line up, we've actually done this more than once where we'll go to a Dodger game, a day Dodger game, get in the car, drive straight to San Diego, go to a night game in San Diego. So that's two games. Mm-hmm. The next day, there'll be a day, stay in San Diego, the next day there'll be a day Padres game, and 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 that night go to an Anaheim Angels game. So four games, <laughs> four games in two days. That's pretty cool. I've done some <laughs> similar around here, except we don't, we have minor league ball here, and so, like, there'll be a day game in Hillsboro. We'll go to a day game in Hillsboro, watch the hops, then kick over to Salem Kaiser for a Volcanoes game, or kick down to Eugene for a Eugene Emeralds game. And so we've done that a couple of different times too on the minor league end of it. It's yeah, pretty yeah, fun. If you, if you, the schedules have to line up perfect, and then you can do it. Yeah, we've done that like two or three times. You know. Do you have a favorite ballpark? I mean, I, I, I'm assuming Dodger Dodger Stadium is my favorite ballpark to go watch a game in. And I think so, Dodger Stadium is really stellar. You know, so I think it's a great. It's a great. It's got kind of a early '60s Jetsons architecture. Yeah. Or like a, a Tomorrowland from Disneyland. It kind right. of looks like, uh, which I think is really cool. Uh, the sight lines are great. The weather is always good. There's no humidity. Um, uh, the parking it could be easier. Uh, you know, but I've been to a lot of good parks. You know, the other stadium is really great. And my buddy from Washington, he's been to way more parks than I have. He says it's his favorite as well. Yeah. But I like San Francisco's park a whole lot. Um, uh, Padres have a nice park. Um, uh, uh, Angels Park's nice. I mean, you know, we're blessed here in California. Four four teams, you know. Now, are are you a are you a a hot dog guy teams, actually, no, or a hamburger guy? When you go to a stadium and get some food, do you do you get the Dodger dog or do you get like some of the specialty foods that they have? Um, you know, honestly, I don't eat a whole lot at the park. Okay. <laughs> but I have had Dodger dogs before. But, uh, 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 I, uh, um, unless I get there super early, like we, we like to get there early a lot of times and, uh, um, go to batting practice, mm-hmm. like that. 
and um, then maybe then I will. But, uh, uh, you know, honestly, I'm not a big fast food guy. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, Have you ever... The dogs are okay. I usually eat before I go or right. uh, uh, maybe after. But once the game starts, I don't like to leave my seat. Okay. Have, have you ever... can really bad. Have you taken batting practice in a, in a major league stadium before? No, never. I'd love Nobody's to. let you out on the field. Excuse me? Nobody's let you out on the field yet. No, I'm not good at networking. I'm not good at asking oh. for stuff like that. You know, Somebody it's, it's hard. It, it's do. hard. It, it is. It's awkward. Well, I'm just not good at. it. I'm not even good in the world that I, uh, that I work in. You know, right? Rock stuff. I'm not good. You know, like if you told me, oh yeah, all these guys are having this big party, you know, these artists and musicians and all these people are going to be there, I probably wouldn't go because I'm not comfortable with it. Like, There's nothing wrong with that. Me. No, I There's just don't feel good about it. It's like, I, I'm, I'm embarrassed by it. Not that I feel like, oh, I don't want to act like a big rock star or anything like that. It's nothing like that. I don't want to go to any parties. See, and that's what you're. You're so down to earth. You know, I oh, mean, you. you are in. You know, in 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 the big scheme of things, I mean, you can. I mean, you're considered in, by some people the the godfather of grunge. And well, you, you know, know, look what they do to the godfather. They always get executed. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I have told a story about a, a, a relatively famous story of mine where uh, um, Dave Grohl called and said, wanted me to come to the Cricket Vulture show that he was playing, and uh, I could meet John Paul Jones and all those people, and I said, sorry, dude, but I've got Dodger tickets tonight. So. There you go. <laughs> there you go. go. You know, my wife, I got off the phone, my wife's like, you're like the only person in the world that would have turned that down. <laughs> you know, I don't know. And it was and they weren't even good tickets. I, 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 you know, I think crappy I crappy tickets, kind of real, relatively crappy tickets. You know, not not like I paid. You know, eight hundred bucks for these seats. I gotta go. No, 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 no. I think it's thirty dollars tickets. <laughs> you know, that's funny because I think I think I would probably go the same route as well. I mean, I'm a big baseball fan as well. And don't get me wrong, Dave. I know you're not listening, but hey, I I like your music. Okay, but yeah, I would turn you down as well. For yeah, games. you know, and the funny thing about it was, it was, it was probably against the Padres or something. <laughs> <laughs> In our division, you know, it's like, uh, I just, I, I just, you know, I can't. I'm sitting there running out through my mind, going, you know, it's going to be some weird backstage thing, and I don't, I just don't want to do it. Right. I don't care enough. I just don't. I just don't. I don't care about that. You know, I really don't care about that. That's the least of my, you know, least favorite thing about playing in a band or being somewhat famous is that whole aspect. And that's really, cool, you know? Yeah, I also don't, I don't want to be Joe Normal either. I, mean, I don't care about that either. I'm an eccentric weirdo. But uh, <laughs> uh, I am uncomfortable in those situations, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, you know? Huh. Wow. Yeah. You know, and, and I remember a couple of years ago, you know, sitting backstage with, with Buzz and, you know, my buddy Mark, and uh, you were just, you know... You know, and a lot of people consider you a rock god, and I know you don't look at it that way. You're just a man who loves his music and and loves playing. And but you just you were so down to earth. There was no ego. You know, you've got you've got the most fabulous hair in in business. Um, one of we'll the best. One of the best laughs. I think you've got one of the best laughs as well. Okay. And so. So you have you have something new that you guys have Crystal Fairy. Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, well, we did this tour, uh, a couple tours actually, with this band uh, La Butcherette, mm-hmm. and they have a female singer, and um, we uh, really liked them a whole lot. And I thought she was an amazing talent. And we started doing a song with her um, during our set at the end of the end, end of our set. And she would come on and sing with us, and I was like, "Oh, we got to you know, just got the wheels turning." And I got this idea that maybe we should do uh, some recording with her. And then we got together with her husband, uh, Omar, which apparently that's a big secret. They're not supposed to be married. Oh, okay. That's about. But uh, <laughs> uh, it wasn't a secret to me. You know? um, right, right. They like to pretend that's not that's not going on. I don't know why, but um, <laughs> let's just say that okay, they're maybe they're married, but maybe they're not married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the certificate, but, <laughs> but, but uh, uh, it's one of those things where you go, okay, uh, I don't know what you're talking about, but we'll just let you have your way, you know. Right. And uh, um, uh, 
Um, and we did start recording it. Came together really quickly, and we got ended up having a whole album. And I'm really happy with it. And we'll see what the future holds. Brian and I listened to it, and it's it's really good. I I like it. I like it. And I, you know, it's it's kind of weird because I don't know how do you class it. I mean, what genre is it? I mean, mm. you know, some it's people kind of rock music, kind of. Yeah, some people call calls it stoner rock, and I don't care about the stoner rock you know tag it just you know it's just good old fashioned you know it's heavy it's kind of kind of a heavy you know guitar and i liked it yeah i thought i think it came out great i was really uh, really happy with it i mean uh, it's rock music of one form or another but it's definitely weird mm-hmm. it's different um, yes uh which is okay with me uh, believe it or not and uh, as far as what genre or whatever it is i i, I just don't uh I don't know, you know. I mean, you know, one thing I can guarantee you is that millions and millions of people won't like it. Yeah, but, you know, millions and millions of people will like it as well. And so... Well, we'd like to think millions, but we won't get ahead, we won't get ahead of ourselves. There's no reason to be reckless. Are you, are you guys planning a uh, tour here soon, possibly? Well, we'll see what happens. It'll okay. be pretty busy, so we're lucky the album even came out. So. And what about the Melvins? What are you guys working on right now? Are you guys working on anything? Yeah, we're working on a double album right now. It should be out sometime uh, end of the spring. And a tour to follow, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll do a bunch of touring, and um, who knows what else. We have a few things planned. We've been playing with Stephen McDonald from uh, Red Cross. He's on this whole mm-hmm. album. And um, that's all going great. He's a L.A. born and bred, and has a lot of really good stories. He's been playing in uh, Red Cross since he uh, we've been playing in bands since he was about 11. Wow. So. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Speaking of yeah. eleven, so so growing up, who who were your influences? Well, I started listening to rock music when I was about twelve. I didn't have any older brothers or siblings or anything like that, so none of that really nobody there to really guide me along. Um, and I've kind of discovered all of it on my own. I lived in a very impressive area. Mm-hmm. That I like to describe not only did I hate it then, I still hate it now. Right. And uh, not only do I hate the people there, I hate their wives and children. You know. <laughs> You know, I hate the very ground they walk on. How about that? Okay. Um, uh, and uh, um, I loved bands like everything, you know, from from Aerosmith to David Bowie to The Who. Probably yeah. The Who are one of the single most biggest influences from the very beginning. I've always liked that stuff. I like all the music I liked when I was 12, plus I still I like a hell of a lot more. You know, right, yeah. Now. I had a buddy. I, I, never, I never went through a phase where I bought, you know, you know, Steve Miller band records or anything like right. that. And those are the kind of records I would get from an aunt when I was like 13 who <laughs> would say, you know, oh, you're into rock music. Here's a, you know, here's a, here, here's a Sticks album, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'll put this right next to Hunky Dory by David Bowie, you know. <laughs> I had a buddy post on Facebook earlier this week, and, and the question was the Beatles, Rolling Stones, or The Who? You know, I like all of them, and and that's what I that's what I said, all of them. Because without the Beatles, I mean, you know, they're all connected in somehow. You know, the well, Rolling. You, know, you got to remember though, Bob Dylan is way cooler than any of those men. That that is true. <laughs> that is true. He was he was the ultimate and cool to me. You know. And then and then you mentioned Bowie. You know, ah oh, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I still you know every week I'll hear a Bowie song somewhere in. God, he's missed. You know, I mean, his stuff there at the end, you know, was a little bit weird for me, but it showed you his his genius, though. He was a musical genius. And yeah, I mean, when I was 13, sitting in my bedroom in Grace Harbor, listening to a song like Quicksand on the mm-hmm. on the Hunky Dory record, there was nothing in my life that was anything close to that. I didn't even know what the hell he was talking about. Right. All this weird shit. And um, uh, and it got it got me into a position where I realized that the world did not revolve around the shithole town I was in. You know? Right. And uh, that you know you could pave over that whole area, and really no one in the world would even notice. And that there's a big world out there, and it, that there's a massive amount of things and a massive amount of opinions, and and uh, 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 that, that have nothing to do with the oppressive lifestyle I live there. You know, I was not happy. I was not a happy kid. You know? Right. Well, and I don't look back on it like the golden years. And oh, it's so it was so great. No, it was horrible. It was the worst experience of my life. 
by and far. It's it's you know? it's a depressing area. It it really is. I mean, I I know a little bit about it. Been around there a little bit, but yeah, it's it's depressing. Just like there are some depressing places here in Oregon. That, Everywhere, you know, small town America or small town wor- in the world in general. It's just not for me. I want right. to live in a massive metropolis like Los Angeles. So I can lose myself in. And I am done living with the rednecks. You know, <laughs> I'm done. Yep. You know? I, I just don't have any interest. I mean, uh, uh, my idea of camping or something of that nature means I enjoy nature all day long and end up at a hotel. That, that's perfect. <laughs> that that is fine with me. There's no <laughs> way in hell I'm out in a tent. Of a convenience store. You know. <laughs> There's no way in hell I'm going to be out in a tent. Not a chance. No, I don't really want to do that. And, and I also, I also don't, you know, just don't have any interest. I mean, I like all the same things. A lot of them like, like, uh, you know, baseball and you know, big guns and stuff like that. I like all that stuff, but I just don't like them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're the problem. And uh, I, I real, you know, once I realized that, once I got mobile and I was able to drive and do things like that, the world changed for me, the whole world. I was just like, okay, I'm, I, I, I can be happier because this isn't, this isn't how it all is. Right. You know, and that was great. That was a, that was an amazing experience for me. And then, we, uh, you know, we're, uh, around the Seattle area and we're playing music and things like that. And, uh, and then when I moved to California in 86, around then, um, um, that was just, that was really it. That was really it. San Francisco was the, Big, it's the first big city I ever lived in, and I enjoyed that a whole lot. San Francisco is a great city. San Francisco is Nice. I, 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 you know, like Randy Newman said, I love L.A. You know, I That's do. Great. There's there's so much to do, you know, and I mean, you know, the weather most of the time, I mean, it's it's pretty close to the perfect. I know it gets hot sometimes, but, um, man, big deal. there's just so much to do down there. Yeah, it's great. It's very comfortable. You got baseball everywhere. You don't have to baseball, drive very easy. far. You know, you got minor league. You got major league ball. You know, yeah. all the musical outlets you guys have down there to go to concerts and go to shows and stuff. It's it's, yeah, it's, it's outrageous. Yep, yeah, it's great. And everything else. Do you do you have a favorite place where you have played, or is there a place that you really look forward to going to and, and playing still today? Oh, you mean around the world? Around the world, yes. Well, you know, clubs come and go, but there's some that have been around a long time. I enjoy the uh, Troubadour a lot here in L.A. I like uh, the uh, Great American Music Hall in uh, San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Um, they have another club that's owned by the same people called Slims I like. Uh, the 40 Watt Club, we've had a long, in Athens, Georgia, we've had a long-standing history with them since probably, gosh, 27 years. Probably. Wow. Um uh, I'm trying to think of ones that we've been doing stuff for a long time, but, you know. But they come and go, right? They come and go, you know. I mean, um, uh, we play the Showbox in Seattle a lot. Mm-hmm. I like uh, the Wonder Ballroom in Portland. That's mm-hmm. that's a fun place. Yeah, you uh, just played there. You just played there here about a year ago, didn't you? Yeah, a year and a half. Yeah, you know. And if we can do repeat business with with clubs, we really like that a lot. You know? Right. Um, we want to go back. We don't want to just play one show. We want to go back and play a bunch. And you know, so, and that's what you know we see here in Portland. You know, it's it's weird. It seems like every six months there during the summertime, you're rolling through Portland or something like that. Yeah, we will play there at least once a year. You know, that's about the right amount of uh, exposure for us. And then um, you know, uh, we'll play California a little more, but not not much. Um, uh, we do somewhere between eighty and one hundred and twenty shows a year without wow. without fail, you know. Wow! So, and that's happened for I don't know. Me and Dale have done probably three thousand or more shows together at least. Holy cow! Yeah, that's what you do. You know. You know. But, and so you know, as time goes on, you get into more and more different things. I, I got back. I played baseball when I was a kid, and I got back into it probably about two thousand and four, mm-hmm. really heavily, and then. Uh, I was not, not much of a sports watcher. I liked playing sports, but uh, I wasn't uh, really too keen on the people who played them. So that's what got made me walk away from it at an early age. <laughs> <laughs> but baseball was the one that I really, it's the only one that I really particularly care about at all. Well, I play golf, a, I don't follow golf. It's you know? a smart man's game, baseball is. <laughs> I think so. I think it's like a chess match. Uh, the, everything I like about it that people think, everything that's boring, that people think are boring is what I like about it. Exactly. 
Um, and I heard, I don't know if this is true, did they implement the uh, uh, automatic uh, walk? On, on uh, yeah, the this intentional year? walk, yes. I'm not for any of that. I don't like that either. I want, I want to get rid of the DH. You know, I, I like seeing pitchers hit. I mean, I, I like the, I like the, the fact, yeah, I like the fact that the NL doesn't have the DH. Um, I love it. That's why I like it. Better. You know, and so yeah, I mean, let's scrap the DH and uh, yeah, that intentional walk deal. That's kind of a crappy thing because you, there's you got some pitchers that that can't just cannot throw a ball. <laughs> you know, intentional walk. So they screwed it up. You never know. No, well, then what they should be doing is throwing uh, intentional, unintentional walks, you know? <laughs> give the guy nothing he can hit. That's right. You and know? so, so yeah, it's not intentional. But the intentional walk, I mean, I don't, who's coming up with this crap? I don't know. You know? It's the new commissioner. Like, I don't I can't say it's him. In, but... I mean, how much time was saved by the batter having to stay in the box, you know? Right. Five minutes, and then what do they do? They go to the uh, replay. Well, that, that kills the whole idea that you've saved any time at all. Yep. And then you got the, I don't mind the, the replay, whatever visits. replay. If they want to do that, that's fine. But you're gonna you're gonna take the one thing away from the batters that they can do to screw up the pitcher, which is screw up his rhythm. You're gonna take that away from him. That has to be put in place by people who know nothing about baseball, right? You know, if you got a guy that's got if you got, if you're going up against a pitcher, you got you you, you have the uh, he's got the upper hand. Mm-hmm. He's got you seven out of ten times. You know, and now you're gonna make it worse. You can't even screw up a guy, especially a pro pitcher who's maybe on that day he's got his best stuff he's ever had. You got to use every single mental trick you can to screw up his rhythm. Yep. And they they want to take that away from him. Who is? I just don't get it. I don't. I, I was like, what? That's the only chance the batter has. You know, or he's already screwed. You know, I don't know. It's, just, it's infuriating to me. So. Today, Japan played. Japan was playing the Netherlands in World Baseball Classic, and it went 11 innings. And so, starting at the 11th inning, now for this tiebreaker rule, they put a man on first and second. Is that, is that in baseball? That's in MLB. In not, not yet, but they're talking about you know extra innings about starting a guy at first or second or, or whatever. You know, your international tiebreaker to kind of help move the game along a little bit. I, I don't I didn't like that. So so let me get this straight. So the six billion or something that are taking in a year is not enough for these guys. No, <laughs> you know I, I don't know how much it is. I think it's around five or five to eight billion. They they bring in from baseball. They, they're trying to figure out a way to make it to where that they might get more than uh, fifty thousand people at a game. Yeah, in Dodger absolutely. It's like it's it's crazy. You know, leave it alone. Huh? You know, leave it alone. You know, I mean. Leave it alone. You know, like especially it, like go. that, you know, and, you know, the balls and strikes, you know, that's going to be every umpire is going to have his own zone for the most part. You know what? That's part of the game. That's the human element part of it. Part and of the game. And it's not going to help. Just, you know, they're it is professional. Not help. They're professional. You know, what, 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 what's scary to me about that is it's like, okay, you want to make it to where the game still can't go 19 innings or something, for mm-hmm. 15 innings. Well, then they're running through their bullpen, and so that was, that's what makes it interesting for the next few days. Yep. Now your bullpen's screwed. They're too tired to pit. They can't do this again. You know what I mean? So this now your next day, your starter has got to go way longer. Well, and that, and you're bringing your right fielder in to throw two innings. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. So, so you know, I mean, you're looking at uh, who's going to win this game. Well, their ace is pitching, yeah, but their bullpen's really tired. So what are you going to, you know, what are they going to do? And nobody ever takes that stuff into consideration. They're going to take that aspect out of the game. No, these guys are professional players who are playing for money. Yep. Throw the, you know, they're out there pitching. That's what their job is. You know, don't take. Oh, we're going to make it easier on the team and speed the game up. These are multi multi millionaires who get paid to do this. If they don't want to do it, don't do it. Go on the DL. There you go. You know, there'll be somebody that'll there's some kid that wants to be out there. You know, you're gonna take you're gonna take that aspect away from them. Well, it'll be hard on their arms. They're paid to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting paid. You know, it's like uh, you don't want to play. Fine. There's another kid that's because this kid from Oklahoma we've been looking at. He wants to play. You know, 
Oh, well, maybe I will play then. You know, I don't know. I don't get it. I just don't get it. <laughs> you know, they, they make a lot of money, and they should. People are paying this money to see these guys. They should be paid to do it. But you should also be expected at that point to step it up. Right. You know, only going to be able to do this for so long. You know, it's your job to do this. Now the, now the manager, with that kind of situation, I might be facing a 16-inning game tomorrow. I have got to manage this team much different than I would have. Yep. I'm not going to have to worry about it because after the 11th inning, this is probably as long as it's going to go. Screw that. No, 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 no. Uh, how are you going to manage this, coach? You know? <laughs> now, what are you going to do? Your bullpen's tired and are you going into extra innings? And you guys better have some. Uh, maybe you should step up your batting practice so it doesn't go into extra innings. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, <laughs> if, so, anyway, if, I'm a way traditionalist when it comes to that stuff. I, I, you know, and and that's cool. I, I, I like that, and uh, I'm a lot of like that in a lot of ways as well. And um, you know, just leave the game alone. I mean, it's been going for for so long, you know. And if the game yeah. goes four hours, it goes four hours, you know. I mean, I love sitting there, you know, you're in the twelfth inning watching the coach. Okay, what's this guy going to do now? Oh, yeah, it's you know, part of the game. Gonna do now, that... what's he going to do? How many times? How many innings can this guy pitch? You know, he can't pitch more than about one and one and a half. Make a manager Maybe earn two. his money. Huh? Make a manager earn his money. Make him earn his money. Now he's in there sweating bullets. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and uh, uh, I'm a firm believer that the games in April and May are some of the most important that they'll play, especially when it comes down to who's going to make the playoffs. Right. So, we're one game out. Oh, I guess those games in April are a lot more important than you thought. You know? <laughs> That's true. Win. you got to win. That's it. Win, win, win. Every single game is the most important game you're going to play. Yep. Hey, if they don't we, approach it like that. I, I think they're idiots. They're getting paid to do that. You're getting paid about. It'd be like me going, I'm playing Poughkeepsie, so I'm not going to play as good a show tonight as I would if I was in New York City. Are you kidding me? I don't know the difference. Right. You know, I play the same show in Reno, Nevada, that I'm going to play in Los Angeles. Exact same. And sometimes it's better. You never know when it's going to be good. You know? Right. Those guys have got to be on it. They're not on it. Why are they professionals? That's true. You know that is true. They are inhuman professionals. They are the best athletes that came from whatever area they were from. In every sport, the cream of the crop, the best that there is, and I expect that when I go to a game, the right. best possible baseball they can play every single day. If they don't do that, I'm disappointed. You know. Yep. Get out there and do it. You're hurt. Oh man. You know. Let's call the ambulance. You know? <laughs> oh no, I can't do it. I can't cut. You know, I mean, they they, they didn't have a pitch count win in the sixties. There's just as many guys in the DL now as there was then. What the hell is going on? Uh, you, you know, you know, that's that's a good question. I I think it's. You know, baseball back in the sixties, they didn't have all the traveling teams like what they do now. No. I mean, they were out there, but I mean, it's obviously it's overuse of of the arms at a young age, and uh, you know, maybe maybe we need to get back to that. But well, I mean, they didn't have a pitch count in the '60s. They didn't. No, you're well, absolutely you're right. To go the distance. Well, you had guys going 300 pitching 350 innings. I mean, for crying out loud, Denny McLean yeah. won 31 games one season. Yeah, but do you ever read uh, ever read? Uh... How he, how he, what he had to do to prepare for those games? Yeah, yeah, we had, zone, yeah, Cody, Novocaine. <laughs> yeah, we we've had Denny With on speed, you know. But still, though, you know, it'll it, that'll never happen again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, whatever, whatever it takes. Right. Me, you know. Yeah. My point is that they have, didn't have a pitch count. And you, now that they're so careful with these guys, there'd be less guys in the deal. There's actually more, you know just as many. Right. Oh, so absolutely. are they telling us that the guys in the sixties were are, were stronger pitchers than they are now? I don't believe that. I I don't, I don't think so that. either. You know, you I know? just just things are different. I mean, there's more weightlifting going on now than what there is. You know, what there was back then. But well, yeah, guys in the Who DL that shouldn't be on the DL. That, oh, absolutely, absolutely, no question. So you know, well, what's funny is I can't I can't say how I heard this, but there's a guy who was t- talking to me very high up in the baseball organization who was saying. Such and such pitcher, we're putting him on the DL because he's lost all his velocity at spring training, and then we got to get rid of him. Because we're not going to tell anybody that. There's nothing wrong with his arm, but we're putting him on the DL. And so, and then at the beginning of the season, and then we're going to trade him. Three, four months later, he's traded. 
Yeah. He was one of their best pitchers. But he, at some point, he could, his arm just wouldn't work anymore. That's so why they dumped him. And so then I'm sitting there going, well, how many of these other guys are on the DL for reasons like that? You know what I mean? It happens. Really all, hurt. It happens all the time. <laughs> and I've 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 seen that. I've seen that. You know, as well. I've seen, you know, for whatever reason, a player gets in the manager's doghouse, and yeah. next and next thing you know, he's on the DL because yeah. he's got a tweaked hammy or something like that. Oh, absolutely, it happens all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's funny, but uh, uh um, but you know, who knows? I mean, I, uh, to me, those things aren't really. Those aren't really a problem. The team can they can run their team however they want. Right. You know, if you want to make a guy throw all day, or you don't want to make him throw at all, it's, it's your business. That's why you're the manager. You can, you can deal with it. I don't necessarily have to understand it. But a really good, really good uh, uh, book is that uh, pitching and hitting book by uh, Bob Gibson and Reggie Jackson. Have you guys read that? I've I've seen it. I haven't oh read it, God. but I've it's seen it. So good. That's so good. I've never read a better book about the psychology of what goes through. Uh, you know the. Arguably the greatest World Series hitter and World, World Series pitcher ever. You know? Right. And uh, what they what they mentally were doing when they went to the plate, what they're thinking, and it just really, really shows you check how that one much out. is involved, huh? I, I've checked that one out. Oh, there's a ton involved, man. I mean, oh yeah, it's it's so cool though to listen to those guys. You know, read read what you know, and just like, oh, I didn't even think of that. You know, right? Talking about the count. The yeah, count, you know, it's on and on and on. It's like, oh my god, this is, it's so it's so surgical. It is, you know, it is yeah. absolutely. You know, Reggie Jackson's looking for one pitch. That's it. He'll go. He'll he'll take a strikeout if he can't get that pitch because he won't swing at a pitch he can't hit. Right. You know, just be having that kind of discipline on and on and on and on, regardless of his personal life. But just you know, when you just nail down the science of what he's doing, it's way complicated and it might be it might be they're they're taking an at bat to set up a later at bat later in the game i mean there's a ton that goes on yeah yeah oh yeah he said he said he he was saying this one thing he's like if i if i've hit this guy's fastball hard three times but they were out i popped up or i hit in the right field or whatever he goes but the fourth time i'm up i'm gonna see a curveball yeah no it's (laughs) true get a breaking ball you know he ain't throwing me a fastball again there's no way you know Oh yeah! Luckily, got got away with these three really hard hits, but you know, so yeah, all that, yeah, setting setting it up for something else, yeah. So if it's amazing, if, if you were playing, and what what would your walk up song be? Oh God, uh, uh, I don't know, some absurd. You know, <laughs> see, I I look at the walk up totally absurd. I have something absurd. Yeah, I I look at the walk up song like. Getting into the other team's head a little bit, as well, you know. And I know it probably doesn't matter, but you know, ah, you know, there's know. so many good ones just to kind of screw with people. We will rock you, maybe by Queen. <laughs> there, there you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Y- you know, or uh, our, our Darth Vader's music. You know, Barbie Girl by Aqua. You know, <laughs> <laughs> something or just White Noise. You know. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Screaming loud white noise. <laughs> there you Stays go. Down when you're about to hit. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Once once again, Buzz Osborne, King Buzzo. Man, I can't wait to uh hear more about Crystal Fairy. Um we'll be oh, yeah. watching we'll be watching for when you roll through Portland and uh you know, hopefully we can catch up to you catch up again and uh Sure. Keep uh Keep working hard. You are one of the hardest working guys in, in, in the biz that I've seen. I mean, you're always out there on tour. Well, like I said, the bar is pretty high with rock music. <laughs> and happy early birthday, Buzz. That's right. You got oh, a birthday thanks. coming you. up. Very nice. Thank you, guys. Yeah. That's I'm, right. I'm surprised to be alive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I right. I never planned on the future because I didn't think there was going to be one. <laughs> right. Buzz, hey, it's always a pleasure having you on. Thank you, and uh, we'll catch up with you here at another time. Thank you, and I appreciate you guys' love of baseball. All right, hey, and and your music. So, all right, all right. You better. sounds good. Buzz. Thanks, Buzz. Yeah, bye. All right, once again, Buzz Osborne, lead man for the Melvins, and I tell you what, he's always entertaining. He is very entertaining, uh, and he's 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 he really knows his baseball. Knows his baseball, doesn't mix words, and tells it how it is, and that's what he thinks, and go with it. If you don't like it, great, not a big deal. No, and you know the 
and that hair, man, I'll tell you, he's got one of the best laughs around. So here's something that maybe you didn't know about Buzz. So the Simpsons, Sideshow Bob. <laughs> supposedly, supposedly he, that, that was the character, you know, off of Buzz. Supposedly. Really? Supposedly. That's, that's what I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not, but yeah, absolutely. I'm going to look into that because that uh, really could be, the, you know, true. I mean, look at the hair. Groaning. Yeah, exactly. And Groaning was, is a Portland guy, Northwest guy. Yeah. Buzz was a Northwest guy. And, you know, there's there's a bunch of stories out there that we didn't get involved with because I don't want necessarily to get all controversial and, with Buzz and everything. But, you know, he's got connections to, you know, Kurt Cobain and Dave Grohl and stuff like that. And, in fact, I was reading a story this morning to where he introduced Dave Grohl to Chris Novoselic and and Kurt Cobain, and so, you know, when when I said that, you know, some think he is the godfather of grunge. That's no joke. I mean, he was in that scene. So it's huge. You know, it's it's uh it's pretty amazing when you think about the whole Kurt Cobain connection. Oh, absolutely. And Nirvana connection and grunge connection. It's 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 amazing. Absolutely, and. Uh, you know he keeps it real. I, I, you know, I really like that about him. And you know, when my buddy Mark McCann and I went backstage there at the Hawthorne to uh, interview Buzz, um, it, you know, I was shocked because I mean, Buzz is a rock star. Whether you know, however he wants to shake it down or not, you know, he's been doing this for many, many years. I'm sure he they have sold many, many albums. You know, and maybe the Melvins isn't, you know, out there on public radio like the Foo Fighters or whatever. But, man, they have a ton of loyal, loyal fans. Brian, you got something? You know uh, Sideshow Bob, who voiced uh, Sideshow Bob? Who? Kelsey Grammer. <laughs> I throw that out there. <laughs> there, you, there you go. So hey, WBC has been going on, and Brian, I've watched quite a bit of it. I don't think you've watched as much of it as I have. I got a lot of basketball going on but, right now. Uh, the heck with basketball? Well, yeah, high school and college. I'll tell you what, Israel Forno would have never would have thought about you know them being Forno at this point, playing good baseball. Um, I think what it boils down to is is the clubhouse. Those guys love playing with each other and for each other. And so um, I watched Japan almost lose to the Netherlands. They beat the Netherlands in extra innings. And, uh, man, it's been it's been fun watching. You know, baseball in the world. The United States lost to the Dominican Republic yesterday. They shouldn't have. You know. Well, there's so. a lot of conversation, um, of course, the Dominican Republic has their best players. Oh, absolutely. United States doesn't. Yeah. You know, but that's what you get. I mean, and still. Is there a better way to do it, though? It's kind of like the uh, NFL. Right. Um, you know, the all-star game. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Yeah. I, I you know, if, if the United States have their best players, and it'd be like the Dominican. I mean, you know, a team like Israel or somebody, you know, Italy, they necessarily wouldn't stand a chance. But. Ah, man. It's kind of like USA Basketball back in the day. Back in the day, nobody you know? could come within 50 of them. Well, when they brought in the Dream Team in 92, nobody, you know, like you said, nobody could come within 50. And it'd be the same thing with baseball. I think yeah. they'd do that this year. But you know what? It's more fun right now this way. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. The thing that blew me away out of everything is is not necessarily the 4-0 start of Israel. I mean, that has blown me away. But... Watching the Dominicans play United States yesterday in Miami. It, if you turned on the TV and didn't know what Marlin Park looked like and listened to the game, you would have thought that they were in the Dominican Republic. It was amazing. And I like that. You know, it doesn't bode well for the U.S., but, man, we're just not as passionate about our baseball 
like the other countries are. We look at our baseball and the roots of it. We were in suits and hats, yeah, in top coats, and somebody would get a base hit, yeah, you know, and that's kind of what the history and and to what it is today. We're sitting on our phones and we're just you know texting our whatever and. That's kind of what we do. You bring in the other countries where soccer is king, and they've got the vuvuzelas, they got the it's you know awesome. the drums. If you're into that, yeah, it's awesome. So so years ago, so I've got a kind of a vuvuzela you know story. So years ago, I was um, working security for the Salem Kaiser Volcanoes, and Everett Aqua Sox had a player whose dad was in from Colombia, I believe. Anyway, it was it was one of the Latin countries. And he brought a whistle to the game and was just, you know, whistling and you know, and I had to actually go sit and explain to him that where that's okay in their country, here in America, the whistle is an authoritative tool. AKA refs. And I had explained that whole thing to him to where you can't be blowing a whistle here. Which is kind of sad. Well, sad, you but know? yeah, that's, you know, there's no, you know, there's probably the rule no noisemakers or, you know. Kind of. I mean, you could bring your cowbell to the game. Funny thing is, it was three timeouts that he called before he got to him, right? <laughs> well, I think he was on the fourth. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you could bring a cowbell. You could bring a cowbell. Why couldn't you bring a whistle then? I that's a, that's a good question. Jerry, come on now. And it had no. nothing to do with Jerry. <laughs> was it the 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 umpire say something? Um, that'd be the curious thing because really, I don't know if you can. I I I I'm trying to remember how how somebody brought it. I I believe so. I believe the umpire did say something. Okay. And then they came because basketball me. game you can't do that because that's what they use. Right. That's part of the tool. Same thing with football. Football, same thing. You know. But baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't you, use your if voice. You bring, if you could bring cowbell, strike one. You can't do that. You could bring one of those little. You can do that though. That is legal. Jigs. In Venezuela. You can't do that. So if I went to the uh, Volcanoes games this year, I'm cool. Guess what we're doing this summer? We are? We're going to break out a couple of moves. For the, for the life of me, I could for the life of me, I can never figure out how to make one of those. Yeah, I just, pierce your lips and it, I'll bring a kazoo. How's that? <laughs> but oh, I can't do it. Dang it! We got me <laughs> harmonica. Harmonica. Hey, so <laughs> hey, happy birthday, Dale Murphy! Today is Dale Murphy's birthday. That's why he wanted to do a show today. Dale Murphy, like my favorite ball player. What is growing he growing up as a kid? He's three hundred ninety nine again. He's, he's old. Yeah. I did see a video of him and Tipper Chipper Jones calling Brave season ticket holders, which were pretty was just pretty oh, really? comical, you know. And you know, you'd have Chipper, hey, you know, such and such, Dave. This is Chipper Jones. You know, who's your favorite Braves ball player? Oh man, Dale Murphy. <laughs> I think after like three Dale Murphys, you got one Chipper Jones. But it, it was pretty cool. Uh, Chipper and Dale in, in uniform making phone calls, and so Chipper and Dale, Chipper and Dale, not Chip and Dale. No, it's, but... it's Dale and Chipper. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, hey, that's Brian. I'm Norm. We are Clubhouse Chatter, and uh, what else we got? We got anything coming up? Ah, oh, man, I have no idea. What's April going on. April first, grand opening for baseballisms. We're gonna go and uh, check it out. I don't think we're going to be doing a show, unfortunately, from there. But, you know, hey, we'll be there. And so maybe we'll have we'll have some business cards. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. So we are sponsored by, if you like my hat, Baseballisms.com. Speaking of Baseballisms, check them out. They got some great new stuff out there. Also sponsored by Baseball Dudes. To be the best, you must try and like the best. Chris Gazelle up there in Vancouver, Washington. 
Based by pros, building an athlete sports education, skipper Mitch Canham of the Modesto Nuts. He's out there with Al the Almond and Wally the Walnut. And his dad, Mark Canham, does our shirts for us for the Clubhouse Chatter, MDM Designs. We stream live whenever we stream live, yamhilltoday.com. Hey, if you have an idea for a show... Shoot me an email, normbo18 at gmail.com. If you'd like to sponsor the show, we'd talk to you as well. You can find us on Twitter, Clubhouse Chatter 1T, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, MLB.com, blogs. Dude, we're all over. Just go Clubhouse Chatter in the search engine and um, you'll find us. Hey, Curtis Cooper. Hi. Thanks for watching. Thanks for the support. And, um, there we have it another show buzz osborne always great to have buzz on i love talking with buzz and uh we'll see you next week